evening and welcome to part two in another episode of The Malik Show. I am your host, Malik Shabazz Sullivan. I'm so glad that you have decided to come on and see about us. Well, we are back with our special guest, the one and only Pastor Dr. Altavon Clark. Yes. And um, before on our first show, we was talking with Pastor Clark on his childhood um, his upbringing from school, college. We talked about his children. Um, we were talking about um, his wife, Lady Sharnita. So just as, well, Dr. Clark, we're going to allow you to finish the rest of uh, you and Lady Sharnita, and we're going to move right along. All right. Thank you. Thank you. As I left off um, talking about um, how the Lord had um, allowed me to talk to her ex-pastor about her and he we were in the parking lot and he um brought her back to me brought her back really fast really fast i didn't i wasn't even expecting him to bring her that 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 night he brought her back to me and said this is the young lady that you wanted to meet and i said oh my gosh so fast so fast and we exchanged numbers got in our car, separate cars went our separate ways we played phone tag for about a week the very next week i think we got in touch touch with each other we talked for about a week I think the very next week um, we went out to dinner mm -hmm. downtown on Seventh Street. All right. And I remember uh, we went to the restaurant, and I, you know, of course I was checking her out, and she was checking me out, and I said, "Now if this is the Lord, you're gonna have to come on and show me again." Hallelujah! Because uh -huh. I wanted to make sure this was it. And so we here we are sitting down at the table, and. Um, we sit here, and that this is for the turn off to her because we sit here, mm -hmm. and the waiter, which was a male, was giving me more attention than he was giving her. So she was like, "What is going on here? He giving him more attention than he giving me." So you know, the radars go up. So anyway, moving further. So we ordered the salad, and they had the salad, and um, here am I, being a proper male than I am because I, as a child, I went to Clinton Christian School and they taught us proper etiquette. Yes. What spoon to eat <laughs> with, what fork to eat with, how to cut our food, how to pull the chair back, and how to push the chair up before she takes a seat. So um, she takes the wrong fork and she eats the salad with the wrong fork. Ah, why does she do that? And so I looked, I immediately stopped and said, that's the wrong fork. Mm -hmm. And she looked at me like, OMG. And she said that night, this will be the last date that I have with this, this turkey. <laughs> because he told her, I'm eating the wrong fork. Imagine going on a date and, you, and your date across you tells you that's the wrong fork you're eating with. So it turned her off. So anyway, um, we got through that night, took mm -hmm. her home. And um, from there, we went on and on. And it got deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper because I knew what the Lord had said to me regarding her. And um, I remember, um, you know, even even um, we were dating heavy, and we went to church. You know, we went to church. Our church moved, and she's great with finances. And so we ended up putting her. She ended up coming. She ended up joining my church. Mm -hmm. She ended up joining my church. And I said, Oh my goodness! Even while we were dating, she ended up joining my church. And um, I didn't want to do that, but you know, she had to do what the Lord says. So she ended up joining my church, and she um, stayed there for a while. And her mom kept asking. Pastor, Pastor, when are y'all getting married? When are you gonna marry my daughter? When are you gonna marry my daughter? And I said, I'm not marrying nobody until the Lord oh, say. That's about the and I haven't heard boy. nothing from heaven yet. So although I knew I said I haven't heard nothing from heaven yet. So um, we dating, you know, dating, I think the dating went on for every bit of four or five years. Mm. And I remember her sisters were on her, her, her family members was on her saying, girl, it's Valentine's Day. I know you're getting that ring. Well, Valentine's Day will come, no ring. Okay, Christmas time come around again. I know you're getting that ring. Christmas time come, no ring. Okay. <laughs> and her mother was just praying and crying and saying, Pastor, because by that time her mother had joined the church as well. So she said, Pastor, Pastor, when are you going to get married? And I said, look, you gonna, I'm not rushing into anything until the Lord say so. I wanted to be clear that it was the Lord himself. And so one day, one day I was um, in my, I was coming down the stairs of my home. I lived out, at that time I was living in Virginia, way out in the Woodbridge area, the Lorton area. And I was coming down my stairs one day and I literally, uh, in a vision, I saw um, a baby running around my house. I saw a baby running and I heard baby noises and I saw a family in there. 
And that's when I said, okay, now it's time. And I went and I bought the ring. I went to the jewelry store and I got the ring. And when I was seventh year, um, my seventh year pastor anniversary, I remember like it was yesterday, um, I got up and I thanked everybody in the room and I said, last but not, not least, I told the church, and that my, the, the band, we, had a, we, was at our, we was at our seventh year anniversary banquet, downtown DC, the place was jam packed. People came from, um, um, New York, people came from Baltimore, people came from Philadelphia, and you know, that's what they do, that's how they do when you're a single pastor, they gonna come from everywhere because they putting their bids in. Come on oh. now. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so, okay. and so, and so they came from everywhere, they came from everywhere. And I got up and I told the church, I said, I'm in love. Mm. And a silence went up across the room. And I told him, I said, I'm in love. And I began, I looked at the musicians and I began to sing, Love Has Truly Been Good To Me by Luther Vandross. And as I began to sing that song, she began to cry profusely. She began to cry profusely. And they brought her up and I got on my knees, asked her to marry, her, marry, marry me. And she was just crying profusely. She said, yes. The shout broke out. She was shouting. The people that was for us were jumping and shouting. And though it was some, it, 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 I schemed over the room. Some were jumping and shouting and giving God praise. Some was crying and getting up, running out to the bathroom and knocking the tables and the chairs over out of anger. And so I said, well, it is what it is. I, prepare, I was oh, prepared for Pastor this. Oh, Pastor Clark, well, <laughs> like I say, well, I'm going to say for me personally, for Lady Sharnita, I met her um, at a service right after Holy Convocation, uh, November 2014. Yeah. And I rem like I say, she has definitely grown these last five years. I mean, she's much different now. Back then, she was just so young and stuff. But that's my first lady. That's my friend. So yes. much love to her and yeah. everything. Now, yeah. we're going to move forward. We talked about the children. We talked about the marriage. Now, we're going to jump into something else now. I'm looking at this, Pat, okay, real quick, I gotta talk about these people. Okay. Pastor Clark is known within the National Church of God in Christ, and as we all know, um, I also wanna get this out there too. Go back, producer, go back to the, okay. Pastor Clark is one of a kind. He is one of the sharpest dressed men that I have ever seen in my life. Um, I remember when I bumped into him in convocation uh, four or five years ago, and I remember he had on these uh, checkered tight pants, these <laughs> double-breasted jacket, this kind. I said, That's "Oh right. my, this is what this is what dressing looks like." <laughs> but when I came, oh, he saw something too. But my thing is this, though. Even tonight, look at him. He's he's fa he's just so fashionable. Look, at, I mean, I mean. So if we, oh. Our producer giving us some shoe cam. So, Pastor Clark, while, oh, not me, well, you can give me some shoe cam, but, but let's focus on him. <laughs> let's focus on him. But he's always been one of the top fashionable people, not only in the DMV, but in the National Church of God in Christ. So, Pastor Clark, if you don't mind, uh, let's, let's talk about fashion a little bit. Let's talk about fashion. Let's talk about it. Let's squeeze it in here. Why Does don't anybody we? know anything about um, uh, Mother Clark? Mm -hmm. She was a very stylish lady. Mm -hmm. She was a very, very stylish lady. And so she brought us, my sister and I, up to be stylish people. We always kept ourselves And here's the together. picture of Mother Clark and your sister. Yes. Um, my producer is going to give us that picture while he scrolled past some of these. <laughs> there we go. Yes, yes, that's right. And that was doing when I received my doctorate from the um, J. Helen Burke um, Theology School. Mm -hmm. But she was a very stylish lady. She wore hats, I mean, hats, hats galore. And I mean, hats galore. Every Sunday, she had a hat on. Mm -hmm. Every Sunday there was a hat. There was not a there was not a Sunday that she did not have a hat on her head. And if she did, I don't know. Maybe she had, had got a, a hairdo or something. But um, and so she taught us, my sister and I, how to um, you know just keep that fashion up. And so throughout our childhood, throughout our life, my sister, my sister evangelist Trina do. Mm -hmm. And I always. Um, say at one time she was a go-go queen until the Lord saved her real good and mm -hmm. sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. But um, she's, always, she's always had the latest shoes, the latest designer jeans. Mm -hmm. Back then, you may not know this, but back then those in radio and TV land 
You remember when they had Who Shot JR Jeans? That was way back in the day. The Rider Boots. When all that stuff came out, she was one of the first ones to get that, that particular stuff. She had oh, all wow. the, the gold earrings with the name in it, the gold earrings. So mm -hmm. she was gold everywhere. She was oh, one wow. of those. So, and and we, just, we just kept our fashion up and it just, it just grew up with us. Well, past the clock, I might say, not only within the Church of God in Christ and local area, you definitely are fashion statement, and I, I get thumbs up, all kudos right. all the time. But let's go back to some pictures that I want to talk about with you and some important people. Okay. Uh, I see a beautiful picture here back at Convocation, and this was, if I know, this was two years ago. Two years ago, exactly. And right. you are in a picture here with the one and only Lady Ruby Holland Hutchins. Yes, Ruby. Yes, like Lady Ruby, an anointed woman of God in this grand church. And we thank God for her and her, yes. her fashion. She's, she's a very stylish lady. Yes, she is Memphis, she, Tennessee. Yes, and she's always been a stylish young woman. She's um, anointed from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. She's an anointed woman of God. And we do praise God for her. And um, she was walking down the red carpet as they, as they do anybody that go to our um, convocations mm -hmm. um, in St. Louis know that, you know, folks do walk down that red walk carpet. Walk down that red carpet. And so she was walking down that red carpet, and, um, you know, I asked to take a picture with her, and she did. She took one with me. And I, I have several pictures on that red carpet with um, even Bishop Gibson. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to, well, now that we say something about Ruby, there's some other people that we, um, I'm going to let my okay. producers just keep scrolling. Okay. That's a nice picture, though, of Dr. Clark. Uh, that was a New Year's Eve, 2015, going into 2016. I That's took right. that, actually. That's right, okay. So we got that, and we're going to scroll on to the next one. We're going to talk about that. That's something to talk about, that platform. We're going to keep on. That's a nice That's picture right. of Dr. Clark. We gonna, that was during the doctorate as well. The doc, that was during the doctorial. Yeah. That's when he had a haircut and no beard. <laughs> Yeah, that's nice as well. Now, here's another yeah. picture. Yes. Here is one of, I mean, I consider him as not only a friend. I know this gentleman very well, and I'm sure, you, I know you do as well. Yes, yes. But he was he, he also had put a movie out this year, mm -hmm. the one and only Bishop Carlton Pearson. Yes, Carlton Pearson. Um, he's one of a kind, and Pastor Clark, on your, I, I mean, what do you have to say not only for him, but also for the movie that he has uh, put out this year. Well, um, you know, I, I have, I, as a young child, I've, um, I've grown to like uh, Bishop Pearson. Mm -hmm. um, he has, he is, and was then, an anointed man of God from the Azusa Street mm -hmm. um, conference that he used to have, and um, you know, he was just, it was just so powerful. And I, I don't want to really go too deep, you know, about you know what happened if he fell off if he fell on mm -hmm. I want to get I don't want to really get in, in into that but I do want to just say that he is an anointed man of God and um, this particular picture that you see of us we were staying it was in St. Louis we were staying at the um, Union Station Double Tree Union Station mm -hmm. and um, my wife and I were coming out and he was coming in the door and I said Bishop and I took a picture with him and I got his information and wanted to um, get him to my church Every time I've been trying to get into my church for a long time, but mm -hmm. every time he um, we talk, mm -hmm. he brings up his his doctrine and his inclusion and what mm -hmm. he would, what he would, what he would teach. And so, you know, um, and I said to him, you know, just because you come to my church doesn't mean you have to go that way. But I guess you know it is what it is. It so is what it is. It is what it is. So, well, here's um, a, well here, we're going to scroll through some more pictures here. We talked. Oh, we already talked about Prophet Mosley. Yes, we've already talked about him. Um, it's now, let's talk about this guy right here. Now, he is one of a kind, one of my New York friends, our New York friends. We yeah. know him very well. Yes. And he is the shouter himself, the yes. one and only Dr. Kevin Bond. Let's yes. talk about Kevin Bond. Kevin Bond, Kevin Bond. Um, now, him and I, we, we connected, um, when I, as I mentioned, when I was um, living in New York mm -hmm. and was part of the Institutional Church of God in Christ. Uh, that's where we that's where we connected, and then he was also part of the of the James Hall um, and Worship and Praise group choir. Mm -hmm. And so I had an opportunity, a uh, young lady that I was there with that knew I was acquainted with, um, um, which is now a council, one of the, the councils in Brooklyn, uh, Renee Collymore. Mm -hmm. And so her and I was very acquainted, and we got, had an opportunity to travel uh, New York extensively mm -hmm. with James Hall and. Um, 
and his choir. So Kevin Bond is a, is a great man. Great man of God. Great man. Well, we're 13 minutes into our show, but Pastor Clark, this is what I want to talk about in these last 13 minutes. Like I said, we're going to save the best for last, you know, as the pictures go on. I want to talk about now Greater Praise and Deliverance Tabernacle Church of God in Christ. And there's yeah. a picture um, that our producer is going to show of you dressed up in a nice white suit. Okay. And go ahead, go ahead, producer. Okay, okay. We, um, that was during Pentecost Sunday, Pentecost if I'm not mistaken. Pentecost Sunday. That's there right. we go. Pentecost Sunday. So let's talk about Greater Praise and Deliverance Tabernacle Church of God in Christ. Let's talk about the birth. The birth of this church. <clears throat> the Lord has had um, quickened me to start this ministry. Mm -hmm. And at that time, um, I went to my pastor and bishop and told him what the Lord had said. Mm -hmm. And he, he um, didn't release me. And I think, he, and um, I don't know his reason why, but he didn't release me. And I said, okay. And I stayed still, stayed put. But I knew there was a push and there was a yearning inside of me saying, you got to go. You got to go. But what he did do, he released me to go and preach and run revivals, but he did, but he did not release me to pastor. Mm -hmm. So I stayed put. But although I heard what the Lord said, and I stayed put. And one day I was in my bathroom, and I heard the Lord say, I've told you once, if you don't go, I'm going, you're going to experience, I'm going to give you a Jonah experience. In other words, what I'm going to do is going to affect everything around you. Mm -hmm. And I went back to the back to my path and I said, listen, I got to, I must leave. I must go and start the work. I must go and start the work. And so that's when we started that uh, work 2002. Um, we started with the Bible study um, in, in December of 2002. My all my aunts came. Uh, my mother came, which was my which was my biggest supporter. And we started that church. And by um, April of the next year, 2003, Mm -hmm. uh, we had our first service, which was in Suitland, Maryland, mm -hmm. in a building that we had there, 5501 uh, Silver Hill Road. And that was our first service, and um, we, we opened up with about 21 members, mm -hmm. mainly family members. And um, since that time, the Lord has blessed us real good. The church has grown. Uh, of course, the church has gone through transition, um, you know, but through it all, we've sustained. The Lord has been great, grateful to, great, grateful to us. Uh, we're now in Landover. Um, 815 Bright Seat Road, where the Lord is doing great things there. Beautiful church. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful <laughs> edifice. Yes, it is. Great things. And I tell, you know, anybody that know anything about ministry know that you're going to have ups and you're going to have downs, but you got to stay the course. Because if you stay the course and know, and, and, and um, know, um, if you stay the course and know where your help comes from, God will sustain the work. He will sustain the work. I want to encourage you out there, if you're watching me, I want to encourage you now, that I don't care what it looks like in your ministry, if you're, if you're a pastor, if you're a minister, if you're going through whatever, I don't care what it is, if you just stay the course, glory to God, just stay the course, he will, he will come to your rescue. I don't care what nobody say, I've been, I've been pastoring for 15 years, going on 16, you would think I've been pastoring for 35 or 40, because my church have gone through many transitions, many ups and downs, but through it all, We've learned to trust him, and through it all, the Lord has sustained us and carried us through. Ain't that something? Yes. That's awesome to hear. And might I say, Greater Praise is a beautiful church. And even with me personally, I came on the scene at 4901 Nanny Helen Barrels in mm -hmm. Washington, D.C. And That's I'm right. telling you, uh, from there up into where we are now, it's just been awesome. Good services and everything. Just love it. Love yeah. it, love it, love it. Well, we're nine minutes in. Um, um, okay, so Pastor Clark, we are going to talk, as our producer goes on, we're going to talk about another part of the show that I want to get to, and um, yes, this is where we are. Okay. I met this saintly lady um, in 2014, was my first time meeting her. Uh, as we all know, this is the one and only, the late mother overseer, Fanny Clark. Yes. Uh, Mother Clark didn't take no, didn't take no mess. Cause I remember when I came in, she said, um, I used to take pictures and bring my cameras. <laughs> I would tell this little story and I'll be done with it. I always was the photographer, the media man and everything. So this one time I had brought my camera and um, 
I came in the front of the church, have a seat. I think this was either 14 or 15, and she was sitting in her little black chair and stuff. So she just kept on giving me this look. I said, oh, why, why is she looking at me like that? But at the end of the service, I think I had snapped the piece. She said, oh, no, I don't do no pictures. I No, 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 I don't like no pictures. I said, mother, it's just a picture. Pastor Clark said, oh, well, don't put it on the Facebook. And I said, okay, Mother Clark. But ever since then, I have drawn to love her. Yes. Every time she sees me, she always say, boy, you got, every time I see you, you got something brand new on. You must got a big job. I said, well, mother, yes. I said, mother, just pray for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, sadly, last June of 2017, I personally had walked into the church on, uh, it was a Sunday morning. I came in and I had saw her chair was draped in white, mm -hmm. and I had asked one of the members, why is the chair draped in white? Well, they said, well, Brother Malik, Mother Clark has went home with Jesus, has transitioned, and right there, I kind of left outside, and I didn't come in for about 20, 15, 20 minutes because, um, Mother, you know, it's something about with me and older saints, mm -hmm. mothers especially, and uh, Mother Clark was very dear to me, but Pastor Altavon, this is your mother. Yeah. This is the lady who gave you life. That's right. So how did you take that? Um, this is the last question that, that I'm going to, you know, take your time with it. Okay. How was it when Mother transitioned? What was going on with her and all that? Okay. Kind of now, you know, um, throughout the months and um the Lord began to um, show me some things. I remember driving, and the Lord began to show me as if, and I, don't, I haven't really shared this too much with the, um, with the public, but with um, those in the family, the Lord began to show me that time wasn't long. And that's why I tell people all the time, you have, you have to make sure that you got your business straight and make sure you got it right with God because the Lord will prepare you. And so he was preparing me for uh, such a time as that. He was, and um, I did, you know, I just said, okay, well, I don't know, maybe this is later on in life, but I hear what you're saying, Lord, but maybe later on in life. Mm -hmm. Again, he came back and prepared again. And so she um, took ill, she took ill. And um, I mm -hmm. remember that day when um, I knew something was going on, but I, I went on to work and um, what, who alarmed me was my Aunt Joyce. I came to my car for lunch mm -hmm. and she said, had a text and she said, um, have you talked to your mother? I tried to call her several times and there's no answer. Immediately, I got alarmed because I, I had already knew what the Lord had said. Mm -hmm. So I um, went back inside and I told the folks and on the job, I need to leave now and I'll talk to you all later. And I jumped in the car and I literally flew home. I mean, going 100 miles per hour. All I could think was, you know, Ashton was there with her. Mm -hmm. And so when I got there, I opened the door and I screamed her name real loud, Mom. She said, huh? And I said, what's going on? We've been calling your phone. You're not answering your phone. And she was delusional. She said, there's something going on with my phone. I, I, I think my battery is dead. And I turned to her. I said, your battery is working fine. So right then I said, something is going on. And um, I began to talk to Aunt Joyce, and, uh, my aunt. And she said, why don't you go to the hospital? And she said, I'm not going to the hospital. And so we kept trying, kept trying. She said she didn't. So I took a nap, got up later on that evening. And uh, first lady came home and, and, and convinced her that maybe you should go, because she wanted to brush over and say, let's go to Red Lobster, which was one of her favorite restaurants. Mm -hmm. And um, and so, um, you know, I remember leaving, and the baby boy, uh, which was Ashton at the time, mm -hmm. baby, baby boy, he said, okay, bye-bye, Grandma, get better. Mm -hmm. and went to the hospital, and um, thinking, you know, I was going to bring my mother back home. And so um, it never happened. You know, she was in there for 11 days, and it seemed like that, she had, at that juncture, she would say, I'm tired and I need to go on and be with the Lord. But of course, some didn't want to let go. I sat there in that bed beside her by myself. I began to text my sister. My niece was in the Bahamas and I texted and I said, you gotta come to the hospital because something is transitioning. Mm -hmm. And they kept saying, brother, hold on. It's all right, this ain't nothing. Uh, mother been in the hospital before. I said, oh, but I'm sensing something different now. Mm -hmm. I'm sensing something different now. And so they got to the hospital and um, they kept on, you know, they, we kept speaking life. And I said, we can speak life, but I'm still sensing something different now. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Anybody know, me knew that me and Mother Clark were like two peas in a pot. You know, you saw one, you saw the other. We went, we would go out and lay hands on the sick and they'd recover while she would be laying, while I would be laying hands, she would be singing a song or anointing mm -hmm. while I'm praying. And so um, when that happened, that was, it was very, very devastating, very, very devastating to the entire family. She was what you would call the glue mm -hmm. that held the family together. And so um, even during that time, you know, the family didn't know what to do, which way to turn. I had a f huge family meeting mm -hmm. at my cousin's house. And I said, let me tell you all something. We can get through this if we stick together. Stick together. I said, but we're going to have to stick together. If we stick together, we can make it. And so, you know, we you have to accept what God allows in this time, in this season. It was a it was a major hurt to the family. It was a major hurt to myself. It was a major hurt to the ministry because she's been the one that was on the wall, that has been, that's prayed this church through, that have seen the church go, go through transition, but she's prayed the church through. I remember when... Um, uh, one day I was in prayer and the Lord showed me her and said, she is the overseer of this church because she's overseen and she oversees what goes on in this church. Mm -hmm. And I remember that day I said, yes, yes, sir. Yes, Lord. And I remember it was in a high service one time. Matter of fact, it was during her birthday celebration we've had and um, different bishops were there. And I said, today we're going to do something right now. Mm -hmm. We're going to call Mother Clark up. We're going to anoint her right now as the overseer of this church. And we anointed her that, that day. We were, in, we were in Landover at that time. We anointed her and made her the overseer of our church. Mm -hmm. and, um, um, and we just we, we say that we miss her very dearly. The, the, the church misses her very dearly. Mm -hmm. um, the family misses her very dearly. But we know that all of us have to go that way one, one day. Yes, indeedy. Yeah. Yes, indeed. But until then, we're going to enjoy our time in holiness on earth. Yes. But um, we're one minute down to our show. But uh, Mother Clark, I know you're up there listening in heaven. We do miss you. And I am so glad that um, you were, were well, part of, you know, I got a chance to get to know you. Such a beautiful woman. And um this show is going to be dedicated also tonight to you as well. So yeah. I hope you're up there spiritually watching and listening and watching your son yes. where he is today at 46 years old. Yes. I know the man's age, Jesus. <laughs> but yes, indeed. But we're 50 yeah. down, 50 seconds down to our show. But I thank all of you for watching the Malik oh, show on tonight, Pastor Altavon Clark, you have just made the night. <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right. Yes, indeed. <laughs> but tune in next time on the Malik show. Um, Y'all keep me in your prayers. We're on our way. Well, both of us, really. We're on our way to St. Louis in St. another Louis. week or two. So, Louis, you know, Louis. hopefully when I come back from the Malik show, um, I will have pictures and videos, you know, and, you know, my, you know, we'll see. Whatever it takes us. But Dr. Clark, thanks for coming. Yes, thanks for having me. Yes, indeed. And um, and again, I thank all of you for watching. And yes, I am your host, Malik Shabazz Sullivan of The Malik Show. Until next time, be true, be you. God bless you. God bless.